Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe After Effects CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a simple and clean lower thirds title for your intros and projects. So let's begin in After Effects by creating a new project and let's go to composition and create a new composition first to begin working on. So I'm going to make mine 1920 by 1080, just a default high definition format, which is going to work good on my YouTube projects. So I'll press OK. And you might notice that my background shows that it's transparent, even though it showed that we picked black. You can toggle the transparency on and off by pressing this little grid icon right here. And you can render it transparent later on when we finish up. So let's begin working by creating a new solid. So let's go to Layer, New, Solid. And let's choose a color that we want to use. So I'm going to use a light blue, which sticks with the theme of my channel right now. So I'll press OK and then press OK there. It'll create a solid. Now this is the full size of the composition, but I can just click on the corners and drag it down to a size that I want. So let's make a nice clean lower third style bar and move it over to the bottom left for us to begin building out our intro with. If you ever want to adjust the color of this, all you have to do is go back to layer and then go to solid settings. And then you can double click on that and adjust the color if you made it slightly too bright or whatever. So press OK, and now we have our, our solid here. And what we're going to do is animate it so that it slides in from the left. So if we drop down this menu and open up the transformation properties, you can see it's actually pretty straightforward how we're going to do this. We're going to add some keyframes on the position. So let's start at the very beginning at zero, and let's click that stopwatch icon to toggle animation on. And then for this example, I'm going to just move the X position off the screen to the left because I want it to come in from the left. Now let's move over on our timeline about one second and let's make the X position at a point where we want the intro to stop. So right there is a nice lower third position that we could place on top of any of our video projects and they wouldn't cover up too much of the screen. So that's where it's going to end and this is what that animation looks like when we play it back. But as you can see it's a little bit clunky. It doesn't have that nice velocity to it that makes the lower thirds look clean and smooth. So the magic trick here to step up all of your motion graphics and get those smoothly moving things is highlight your keyframes and then open up the keyframe graph editor here by clicking this button. This is going to allow us to see how the keyframe is moving from one space to another. And you can see here it's just a straight linear path, which is why it doesn't look as nice. So what you can do to edit this is highlight both of these and then in the bottom right corner you should see some defaults for you to choose from. So you can choose the default ease or ease in or ease out and play it back and see how that looks. However, you can also do things like right click on the keyframe and then go to keyframe velocity and here you can input and influence the percentages of the speed. So you see there's incoming velocity and outgoing velocity. So I want it to come incoming pretty fast, so I'll make that 80%, and then I want it to fall into the final position or outgo pretty slow, so I'll do 20%. And when I press OK, you can see how the line gets adjusted so that it comes in fast, but then it slowly slides into its final position. So that's how you tweak the velocity, and you can play around with different percentages by right-clicking and choosing different velocities. So this that was 80, 20, let's try 10. And see how that looks. And you can see you get that nice smooth push in and then fall into place slowly animation. So now you can decide how long you want your lower thirds to stay on the screen for so people can read them. Typically keep it around five seconds or less. And then let's choose how to fade it out. So you could go through the same way that we did the intro, but since we've already created it, what I'll do is just copy this keyframe by pressing Command C. I'll copy these two. And then I'll press Command V over here at four seconds. And I'll just go to the position keyframes and I'll just take the second one and flip it around for the outro. So now we're going in to out rather than out to in. So when I play that all back, this is what it looks like. Smoothly goes in, stays on the screen for a couple seconds, and then goes out smoothly as well. Next, let's add some basic text into this lower third. So let's go to Layer, New Text. And that's going to create an empty text layer above your blue solid and type out whatever you want. Usually you can put people's names or their titles or positions or maybe their social media handles. So I'll type out my social media handle. 
And by the way, if you're not following me, that's my social media for Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that. So reach out to me. Let me know what you think if you're enjoying this tutorial. And once you have it typed out, you can highlight it. And then in the character panel, which if you don't see, you can go to window and make sure you have the character panel turned on. You should be able to adjust the font and the size and the color of it to be whatever you want. So once you have your font picked out how you like it, you can click and move it onto the proper positioning that you want it to be at. So let's say I want it to be here on the right hand side of that lower third title. Now there's a few ways that you can choose to introduce your text. So as you can see, you don't want it to just be standing there the whole time. You can do things like do a opacity fade in at the right time or make it move in from the bottom, whatever you want. But I'll show you two quick options that you can choose for the text. One, if you choose to make the parent layer of the text object, the royal blue solid or the first solid that you make, then it's just going to come in along at the same time as the solid. So you can play around with the positioning of it by pressing V and moving it to a good starting point. It's just going to follow that same path and position and just come in and out just like that. So that's pretty good and clean. But another cool one that we're going to do and the one that I'm going to do for this tutorial is I'll remove that parent file. And if you go over to the blue solid and take the track mat and do something like alpha inverted mat for the text layer, what happens is the text layer will be inverted by the solid. So it's not going to show up and when it shows up, it's going to be transparent pretty much. And that's going to be perfectly fine because I'm going to show you how to add a little bit of a white backdrop detail behind it. So you can see what happens. It only gets revealed when the solid comes through, which looks pretty clean in my opinion. And now let's take our blue solid and let's just command C to copy it and command V to paste it. So now let's take the lower and bottom layer and let's go into layer solid settings and let's make this layer a different color. So I'll use white as my accent color. You can use whatever you want. Now this one, we're going to turn the track mat off. So no track mat. That means this white solid is behind everything. So you can see it kind of fills in the text again. However, we're going to create a slight delay in this so it doesn't follow the exact path by just taking the timeline here and moving it to the right a couple frames. So now it's a couple frames delayed. And what that's going to do is create a cool little tail end for us. So at this point, you have your very basics down. And from here, you just go on and build more solids and graphics and little accents to it to make it your own. So for example, if I wanted to make another smaller solid for me to put an actual sentence or call to action, then I would just go to layer, new solid, and then you could make your new solids, do the same thing, scale them down to a new size, and let's say maybe we'll make another one here on the bottom that kind of attaches in, and except for this one, we'll make it come in from the bottom. So we'll add a keyframe at the very beginning on the position, we'll move the Y position down off the screen, and then we'll go in the same amount of time that the other one comes in. We'll place the positioning back up on top. And then we'll highlight those and we'll go into our keyframe velocity editor. And then we'll do something like 80% speed incoming and 20% outgoing. So we got another piece of title there for us to lay text on top of. And you can see how you can slowly build out your own custom lower third intro for you to use make it exactly how you want. Now, when you want to go to render it, what I like to do is just keep a render transparent file for me to throw into any projects that I want. What I'll do is just toggle the transparency grid so that it's there. So we have a transparent background and then go to file, export, add to render queue. And you want to open up the output module and use your own custom settings here in the video output channels. Instead of red, green, blue, you want to choose red, green, blue, plus alpha. That's going to make sure that you render transparently. Press OK, do whatever settings you need or want, and then just press render and you should see it render out to a place on your desktop or whatever folder you have it selected to. I love that finished exporting sound in After Effects. But as you can see, now I have my transparent lower third for me to drag into whatever projects I want. It might not look transparent in QuickTime Player, but it will be when you open it up in any editing program. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then definitely leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for all future tutorials. I definitely want to get into more advanced type of motion graphics like this if you enjoyed this. And you can follow me on social media at Justin Odisho on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that. 
If you want to reach out to me, show me any examples of your work or if you have any questions. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.